Is there a date on that letter? No. Well, let me look at it. How do we know this is Valerie Craven's handwriting? Well, I'm having a check, but it, it matches the writing in a diary to an untrained eye. OK. So you're guessing it's a genuine letter. Doesn't mean it was written yesterday, does it? Doesn't mean she posted it herself. Doesn't mean it was actually written to her parents. I mean, the envelope doesn't match particularly. And it may well be that this sheet of paper has lost its head. Dear who is what we should be asking ourselves. Dear who and when. likely to be home this time of day, is he? Exactly. So if he's hiding around the bed, we'll find out, won't we? Know this man, do you? Mr. McGuire? I know who he is, yes. Don't know him in the sense of knowing him. No. Thanks. I should come in with you. I'd rather you kept an eye on our backs. I know before I meet Mr. Maguire that I won't like him. What's that, sir? Nothing. Do you like London, Lewis? No, not much. Our oh, Maguire's a country sort by the looks of it. You reckon? We ought to be able to arrest him for his taste, Lewis, but we can't. So, you know, um, has he paid his television license? Uh... Is his telephone approved? Goes in for the gadgets. Owes his credit cards a lot of money. In fact, he owes his credit cards nearly as much as I earn in a year. Hateful, but not enough. What about this? These. No, no, no. Cross-dressing, it's legal. No, I mean Valerie. You see, if Valerie lived here, there'd be magazines, her books, I don't know, something. If she died here, that's different. What does she say about Maguire in her diary? Nothing very... Uh... No, I can't remember precisely, to tell the truth, sir. His name, obviously. Memorable stuff. Well, you know they met at a party. Oh, his star sign. She talks about his star sign. There's your motive, then. He murders anyone who asks him what his sign is. I like him better already. It's very sophisticated and very sensitive. And it means you can leave the door open and still be secure. Now, if someone could just be the burglar. Now, hang on, I'll be the burglar. Would you be kind enough? Just press the buttons marked police and alarm on, and then off when I trigger the alarm, all right? On, then off. Great. So, here I am after your original Picasso, your Ming vase, and the keys to your Porsche. I spend half an hour forcing the double turn lock, tiptoe in, and hey presto. And it's also sounding downstairs at the Porter's Lodge. Thanks. Could you
you turn it off, please? Well done. Mr. Maguire, could we have a word? Yeah, I'll answer any questions at the end, OK? Just a few minutes outside. Look, if you miss the start, we can go around again when I've finished. We're policemen. And? We'd like a brief word in private. What about? I'm working. Is this more about Valerie Crape? Give me a few seconds, will you? Just have a wander around. OK. Great. I've had it up to here with you people. Let's just go out on the balcony, shall we? I'm going to speak to my lawyer about this, because this is harassment. I'm sorry, sir. What is? I made a statement. I've been questioned about eight times. Not by us. Look, I met her at a party. I saw her once or twice. This is like months ago. End of subject. She writes about you in a diary. Yeah. Did she ever visit your flat? No. I met her in Oxford at a party. I don't know where she is or what happened to her. All right? Nice flat you've got. Say again? It's not quite in this league, but um, we thought it was very... Um, what did we think it was, Sergeant? When did you go to my flat? Just now. I had a little look around. You what? You better have a search warrant, Sunshine, because otherwise... Otherwise what? How's the nose? My nose is fine, thanks. How's yours? A bit sniffy. Don't try that one. There's nothing there. It's absolutely clean. It's very hard to be absolutely clean. Tell me, when did Valerie Craven tell you she was pregnant? Look, you better let me get rid of these. Go ahead. I didn't know she was pregnant. Neither did I. OK. I've got Chief Inspector Morse and Sergeant Lewis here today to uh, ask you some questions about Valerie. Now, I'm going to go. I think the officers are worried I might inhibit you, so don't spare them any of the dirt. The truth about Dooley. Uh, the caretaker. He's 103, but we've got our theories. So, they're all yours. If they bite, press the fire alarm. Or get them to press their personal alarms. Yes, we heard about them. Yes, we're all kitted out, aren't we? She was never short of men, a school friend confided. She was always in love every five minutes, was her best friend. Really wild, another friend, etc., etc. So, is this true? Not really. I think it is, actually. It's ridiculous. The papers make things up. It's common knowledge. None of us talk to the press. They put words into your mouth. Did she ever mention the name of any boyfriend? Oh, she must be thinking. John Maguire? I know about John Maguire, but only because we've had this before with some other people, other policemen, and they talked about her diary and stuff. But, you know, she might write something in her diary that wasn't even true. No, I've done that. I mean, your diary's personal, isn't it? I mean, it can be describing something you hope might happen or wanted to happen. I mean, anybody found my diary, they'd have a field day. What about boyfriends at the university? Well, possibly, I don't know. Well, there might have been. But uh, what about crushes? Everybody has crushes. That's what we're trying to say to you. Everybody has crushes. Everybody has boyfriends. Or not, as the case may be. <laughs> <laughs> crushes on teachers? Sure. Valerie? Everybody. There aren't that many male members of staff to choose from, are there? Not that they necessarily would have to be male. There's Dooley. <laughs> Apart from Dooley. Ron. Who's Ron? Mr. Ronald, classics. Is he nice? He's all right. 
And Mr. Aikham, but he's left. DPP? DPP? <laughs> the head, Mr. Philipson. We love this place. We love it. We both travel. We're both ambitious people, wouldn't you say? But we came here, and we came in autumn, I remember, and the leaves were shedding in great flocks, and it was beautiful. Remember that? Gosh. And I, well, I'm not intending to leave. They'll have to carry me out. It's very nice. <laughs> it is. Becky, Inspector Morse needs to And it's wonderful for Sheila. Sheila's yes, a fellowship, please. you know. St. Thomas's. She has the brains. I'm the domestic. <laughs> That's lies on both counts. Are you going for these, Inspector? No. You should, you should. Three is perfect. Someone to bowl at, someone on the boundary, and someone to keep wicket. <laughs> Don't take any notice of him. We never do. Does it bother you living on the school grounds? Quite the contrary. I saunter over. I come home for lunch. I live like a lord. I have my wonderful school. I have my little zoo here. I'm very lucky. <laughs> do you have any theories about... Do you mind my talking about Absolutely. Valerie Craven while go, we're all... Go ahead. I mean, we make it a policy to talk as a family. Right. I, I just wondered what your thoughts were. What happened to Valerie? Well, um, I think it's probable... Well, you think... Sorry, darling, you, you carry. No, sorry, darling, carry on. Yes, well, until we heard she'd written to her parents, I think we'd come to imagine, hadn't we, that she was probably not going to turn up. I think that was certainly our... Yes. But, obviously... Obviously, since the letter, what can one think other than that she's... Well, she's obviously alive, thank God. But where... And with whom? What are your theories so far? I don't seem to have theories. I, I have questions which I don't have the answers to. Sergeant Lewis is the man with all the theories. Isn't that right, Sergeant? Well, I've always thought that Barry was alive, I must say, and that we'll find her. Good. I think we're on a trail. Mind you, Sergeant Lewis has some very far-fetched ideas. We've had Valerie having an affair with the caretaker, Dooley, <laughs> and you. Dooley! Wonderful idea. And you. Oh, that's much more plausible. <laughs> she was terribly pretty. Yes, I'm rather flattered by the idea. Donald, you know very well that half of Homewood has a huge crush on you. Half is an exaggeration. Third at most. And then he moved on, didn't you, Lewis? Mr. Ronald's come and gone. And uh, who's the man that left, the, the French teacher? Uh -huh. Oh, Aikham, David Aikham. Oh, now, he was nice. In fact, it's heresy, I know, but given his wife, who was a crushing stodge, it has to be said, he could be forgiven for having... No, he couldn't. No, he couldn't, and no, he didn't. He was much too... I mean, there are some people you can imagine jumping into bed, and there are others for whom the imagination will not leap. Where is he now? Reading, a comprehensive, huge. Better money? Considerably less, I'd imagine. So? Who knows? It was a Catholic school he went to, although I don't think he was particularly religious himself. Bit of a chip, politics, pressure from the wife, I don't know. You must realise that some people look at a school like Homewood and every beautiful tree, each A-level result, every motivated, bright, alert student is an insult to them. Not that it was necessarily true of Aikham, but he was a sort of... You know, Morris Minor type. Just wait, I'll go. Mrs. Aikham, Chief Inspector Morse, Thames Valley. I think my sergeant will have found. I came on the off chance of seeing your husband. Is he in? No, no. Doesn't come home for lunch? No. Well, uh, I'm sorry I've disturbed you, and uh, obviously... Do those... I've always wondered, do those things hurt when they come off? No, I really don't. Well, there you are. Learned something anyway. Thanks. <laughs> 